The isolation caused by the pandemic may have you down in the dumps at times. Many are turning to their faith to help give them a boost. Here to share what that looks like is Pastor Jesse Bradley of Grace Community Church in Seattle. Pastor Bradley, so glad you could join us this morning. I know it's super early on the West Coast. Hi, CL. Thank you for having me. It's a joy to be with you today. Now, why do so many Americans lean into faith during difficult times, would you say? You know, internationally, it's interesting that University of Copenhagen had a research study and showed that in 75 countries, there's historic rates in terms of internet searches for the word prayer. And then here in America, you think of in God we trust on our money. And that's a reminder to not put our ultimate trust or to not love money, but we trust God and it's written there on our currency. But for me personally, I played professional soccer overseas in Africa and Zimbabwe, and I was sick. I was fighting for my life for a year and 10 years to recover. And what I discovered is, like the good book says, God is a refuge, strength, and ever-present help in trouble. He's a lifter of our heads. He's close to the brokenhearted. And C.S. Lewis said that pain is like a megaphone that rouses a deaf world. And that's true in my story, that ultimately, bottom line, we need God and we need each other. We see that in America and we see that around the world. So how would you say faith motivates people um, in a positive way other than the, the scriptures you mentioned there kind of talk to that but go into that a little more. Yeah, faith is really about relationship with God and with other people. And life's about relationships. The quality of our relationships, that's the quality of our life. And my journey, I came from a family of kind of like Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors spiritually, a lot of different views and beliefs, probably like your viewers. And we really respect each other and we honor each other. We have close relationships. And it was at Dartmouth College on the East Coast in New Hampshire that that was the first time in a religion class that I read the Bible and I started to learn about Jesus. Now I kicked the tire wanted to see historical evidence, but it wasn't just in my head, it was my heart. And what happened when faith came into my life, this relationship with God, is that my heart changed. And I started to forgive people that I never forgave before. And I started to love people. And I believe that laws of the land are important and necessary and helpful. They restore justice. But more than the laws of the land, it really happens in the human heart. And when you think about what we need in our country, like a greater unity or racial reconciliation, the laws of the land are important, but it's going to be in our hearts and it's going to be love and it's going to be our homes. And I believe that faith vertically relates to our horizontal relationships. And there's a joy that's in both upward and outward with one another. What are some common misconceptions about hope and faith? You know, with hope, I think a lot of people think it comes and goes, and it's just circumstantial. But I believe hope is more of a foundation than a feeling, and it's linked to our identity, our mindset, beliefs, and habits. And then on the faith side, uh, it's interesting, our favorite song in America in terms of the spiritual is Amazing Grace, and that's something to celebrate, grace. But surveys show, and Barna's done research, that most Americans think you need to earn your way to heaven. And that's a performance trap, because who you are is more important than what you do. And performance, you know, ultimately that can lead to pride or shame if you're not doing a good job. But grace is an undeserved gift. And when you link those two things together, that hope, it's a foundation, not just a feeling, and it's not performance, it's a gift. When you put those two together, you end up with security deep down because you know you're loved, and security leads to authenticity. And you end up with a house on the rock instead of a house on the sand. And so it's important to kind of obliterate some of those myths and make sure we're walking in love and walking in truth. You know, one of the positives of the pandemic is that it forced a lot of churches to offer online services. And so people can watch from the comfort of their homes, watch wherever they are with their phones. How are, are other ways that churches can be involved in reaching beyond the walls of the building? Yes, yeah, sometimes a pandemic uh, forces, in a good way, innovation. And it used to be that I would see everyone that I'm talking to in the room, but now it's like the city or the nations. And churches are making adjustments and even reaching millions of people with the message of hope. What we've seen here in Seattle, there's about 100 churches and ministries are united together. And I believe life is about collaboration. And the greatest things are going to happen when we're serving together. We're so grateful for the uh, message of hope that you shared with us this morning. Thank you, Osteel. Great to be connected across the coast. Absolutely. Have a great day. Thank you.